I'm Jesse. I love surfing, filming videos, and being outdoors. I'm Jenny. I'm an outdoor adventure mama and a little bit obsessed with the beach. After I finished the military, I went surfing around the world and I got hooked on the excitement of adventure travel. Traveling means more to us than just taking a vacation. It's when we feel the most alive and when we have the most fun because we're close to nature and doing the things we love. We started in Florida, crossed the border in Mexicali, and are now heading down to the very bottom of Baja, Mexico. We're checking out the beaches, the culture, and learning what makes Baja so special. In the last video, we explored the nearby town Punta Final. It's mostly a bunch of expats that have built a small village here alongside the Sea of Cortez. And then we hiked over to an island where we're parked beside. We almost got stuck on the island because it's only accessible for a few hours each day when the tide is low. In this video, we're going to have some more fun in Gonzaga Bay along the Sea of Cortez in Baja, Mexico. I'm Jesse, and you're watching Outside is Calling. <laughs> After our first couple days of relatively calm weather, some severe storms formed off the coast of the Sea of Cortez and really churned up the sea. There was so much wind from the storm that it actually made waves, and some of those waves were pretty big. We'd left Florida weeks prior to arriving in Gonzaga Bay, and we still had a couple more weeks of travel before we got to the Pacific coast of Baja. So we had no expectations of finding surf here. After the storm passed by though, we had these amazing waist shoulder high waves right on the beach, right out our front door. Getting to surf the Sea of Cortez was an amazing experience we hadn't anticipated. Every surfer in Baja dreams of finding uncrowded waves, and as for crowd, there was none. I was having so much fun I easily could have surfed all day, but then the board hit me right in the face. Towards the uh, end of our stay, the winds kind of eased off and went back to being nice and calm in the evening. So I could take out the paddleboard. There she goes. <laughs> Ooh. 
Jenny went out in the evening and was doing some headstands and some yoga stuff on her. Flat water board. is nice. <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty cool. So we both got to enjoy the sea in our, in yep. our different, yeah. different ways. With this challenging terrain in Baja, it would have been real nice to have a set of snap pads. We do have some now, and they make a huge difference for places like right here where we're on very uneven terrain. It gives us a larger footprint, and in our case, the prime snap pads are over three times larger than the original jack size. Consider these your RV's flip-flops from Mexico, or basically anywhere you wouldn't want to walk barefoot, that's where you need these snap pads. Um, but they're also eco-friendly. They're made out of recycled tires, which is awesome, but that way you can just set it and forget it. Check out this link right over here if you want to know more about the snap pads that we have on our RV, as well as the snap pads that might fit your RV. We also have a ton of other great resources to jumpstart your trip. Yeah, things like downloads, checklists, discounts, promo codes, everything that will save you a ton of money. When I was over at Marsha's house with Fabian, we met one of the neighbors, Skeeter, who's a longtime resident and had some really cool history about the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he ended up coming to hang out with us at the RV for a little bit, so Tucker and I were able to meet him. And he was such a nice guy, such a family guy too. He just wanted to like hold Tucker. I guess it had been so long since he had a baby, and he had great stories. I think you're saying you hadn't seen very many other diesel pushers out here? You're the second diesel pusher <laughs> since uh, Easter of last year. So in 1966, my dad and my uncle flew for the Flying Samaritans. Okay. That's the doctors in Baja oh. in a Cherokee 180 okay. uh, that we had. And they would and come so down here to tell people? They fly all over Mexico into the remote villages to bring the doctors to help the farmers and the ranchers with their whoever was sick. Cool. Okay. And so in 1966, my dad and my uncle were flying home along the water and they saw this bay. And mm. so they swooped in and they landed. And there was just a couple old buildings and some trailers. And there was a gentleman named Rudy. And he had been homesteading about three years here. And the property belongs to a lady named uh, Josefina. Okay. And Josefina owned Santa Inez, which oh. if you go back Highway 1, San Diego, I don't know where you guys are going, mm -hmm. but if you go out to the asphalt and turn right to go back to San Diego in an hour and a half, you're going to run into San Inez Ranch. Okay. Her father was a political influence in the 40s and 50s. All right. So they own all the hectares from this beach to the inland oh, properties. Wow. Cool. And so um, we notified her, my dad did, that he was interested in property, but he says we spoke to the guy running the beach named Rudy, and she says, there is nobody on my beach named Rudy. Oh, no. There's, a, there's a, I guess a rule about if you squat on land, uh, I think it's five years, after five years, you own that land. If no, if you if you have made um, upgrades to it, and if no one has tried to claim it within the time that you've been there. Like, if you've been there for five years, undisturbed, and you're like making the land better, it's yours. I think. Oh, so geez. no one had been here for years because it's pretty much desolate then. Uh -oh. So she called her uh, um, the military, the uh -huh. generals, because the family's well connected. Mm -hmm. And the military came in here and he got in a truck and hauled ass and they drug everything he owns out into the desert, the, the Jeeps, the Airstream trailers, everything. There's still scattered pieces out in the bushes. Really? Gosh. And they drug it all out. And so then she brought in the uh, architects and they marked lots. And so we bought lots in 1967 and wow. cool. so it all started. As I come here to decompress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this so. is a special place. So that's where we are, you know. And, we, we, uh, we came here for, what happened? We came here for one day, right? Yes, we came here just to overnight 
on our way down to Guerrero Negro and that was four, five days ago. <laughs> it's hard to leave. It's <laughs> well, you know what? You're actually living in style, so. Yeah, it's comfortable, What's right? What's wrong with sitting on the beach in this one? <laughs> girl. There's nothing wrong with this. <laughs> oh, I like your workstation, by the way. Couldn't ask for a better view for, for doing work. <laughs> he is having fun. So after the winds died down and there wasn't any surf, the boys kind of got a little like twitchy because they always have to be doing something. And so um, Jesse had only been out a couple times before this and Fabian had never been out spearfishing. So I know how to relax a little bit. You do not know how to relax <laughs> at all. Good morning. It's, uh, what is today? Today's Saturday. Got our neighbors live and give, Fabian and Isabella, and the Sea of Cortez. We're gonna go talk to our neighbors and ask them about fish. We're gonna try some spear fishing today, but we are not sure what the best fish are to try to catch here. Son garropa. Pero se encuentra aquí también? Sí, la garropa sí. Okay. Pero... Those you can find it here too. Sí, pero la garropa es muy grande. Okay. Ah, es. Sí, hay unas grandotas en la ropa. Oh, wow. Las arrineras más chicas, las arrineras. You guys who don't know what they're doing decide to go out spear fishing, and just as they're about to get into the water, this big old jacked up truck blaring some crazy music full of what looks like college kids comes like screeching around the corner and parks like uncomfortably close to us for someone that we don't know. And all these like rowdy guys and tattoos come out and they're all sunburned and they're all, it seems like they're drinking. I was like, all right, the, Jesse and Fabian, you're not allowed to leave. Like you're not leaving. <laughs> Isabella and I hear a lot with Tucker, like that's not happening. Anyway, it turns out that they were there to spearfish too. I guess it was a really great spot to spearfish. And so now they're all some like bromance and they're all going out spearfishing together. Yeah, just, I'm not, an experienced spear fisherman but it's just it's in my blood i knew that that was the spot we needed to go spear fishing wow. at it just comes natural no it was this is like like my third time ever spear fishing fabian's first time it was it, i'm sure it was very funny to have been a, a viewer watching this but like essentially it, it was like snorkeling with a gun oh and the guys that pull up they were like legit pros they had, they had camouflage what suits yeah they had gear belts. they were um totally sponsored i don't remember the name of the company Okay, they but have uh, yeah, they were like professionals, and then these jokers are <laughs> not <laughs> amateur hour over here. So it was, but actually, I didn't know this at the time. When we go in the water, and these guys are behind us, and I'm like, who are these guys? And I don't want one of them to think I'm a fish and spear my ass. You know? I know. I was definitely worried about like one of them not coming back. <laughs> it's not fun hanging out on the beach while they're all in the water with the sharks and the big fish. So from shore, the water looks so, in fact, like, like that view on, on the, the mountain looking down and like the drone footage, it looks like it's such clear water. But when we got out there, like the water was crappy visibility. I mean, you can see maybe five to 10 feet, 10 feet kind of being a stretch, but like five feet on average. And there's some spots you couldn't even see two feet. And it made it very difficult to be underwater trying to like look for and then a hold big fish. And gun steady. And yeah, it's a handful.
No, this, this is legit the funniest thing probably of our entire Baja trip. So Jesse and Fabian, they come out and they're like so proud because they got a fish. It's like this big. They each have a fish though. And then the guys, the other guys come out and they're like, <laughs> Hauling in these crazy, like, deep sea, I don't even fish. know. They were the, big They were big. Yeah, they were about 12, 14 inch fish. But anyway, everything turned out fine. Jesse and Fabian started talking to the guys, and the guys were like, oh, hey, we do this every single day. Why don't you take this fish? You guys can have it for dinner. I guess they probably just felt bad for us for <laughs> first sucking so bad. <laughs> we feel so sorry for your wives about what lousy <laughs> spear fishermen you are. Here's some fish. Thanks guys, it was delicious. <laughs> these fish were alive in the ocean just like hours ago. Not so these, even, yeah. So, uh, like barely two hours. Yeah, like, as fresh a seafood as you could possibly have. And it was just so cool. We're there, you know, on our little beach. At this time, it's the evening. Everyone's cleared out. There's nobody out there but, but us. And uh, it was just a very cool experience to... Uh, that was a great Clean night. I mean, right, the sun's going down, the dogs are all playing together, we all have a beer, Tucker's happy, boys are happy because they have a fish and like things to kill. It was great. <laughs> like we have to kill stuff to be happy? <laughs> Look at your face right now. <laughs> So, so it was really cool to, to be able to share some of the little bit I did know with Fabian. He hadn't uh, done any, any fish cleaning or filleting before. So uh, we got the fish out and I showed him how, how, you, how you can kind of descale fish and get the scales off. And then we went to the chopping board and I started doing some fillets. Get your yapping. Look here, lady. So who clean, the, the guy who cleans the fish does not have to cook, right? <laughs> but it was really fun to at least have some fresh fish to cook for dinner. That was the, the, the intention, the plan. There's not much better than that. And uh, it was pretty, pretty cool. And we also had, you know, some good cold drinks and good <laughs> friendships. So it was a, yeah, it was really nice. So we filleted the fish and then uh, we all migrated back over into our RV because our RV is big enough to have everybody inside mm -hmm. comfortably. And um, what's cool, side note about this, what's really cool, so like, the, the, you know, in the RV, all, all the lights and all the power, that's all of our sun solar energy that we collected over the daytime. Mm -hmm. And we just use our batteries over the nighttime to, you know, do most of our, our things. That was our first real experience using solar. And I'll tell you what, that like blew my mind. Pretty awesome. It was crazy. I, we never really had to worry about power. Yeah. As long as it was in the middle of the day, I could still blow dry my hair. We could use the oven. I mean, you didn't need AC. Nights were gorgeous there, so yeah. Um, that was such a cool experience. Yeah. It was just so cool because usually solar, you have to have a lot of it to like make a whole house comfortable. But A, an RV is much smaller, mm -hmm. and B, you know the conditions there in this part of Baja were mostly comfortable. So we had plenty of power for our, our needs. In fact, like, like, yeah, we're having a little dinner party at the RV, blending up margaritas and- Using the lights. Lights and the radio, and yeah. it was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Tucker won't sleep. So now we try that he sleeps on me. Let's <laughs> see if that works. Jenny has been cooking over here. <laughs> we got some sangria. Oh, or yeah. tequila gria. Tequila gria. <laughs> there is tequila in it? No, not yet. Not yet. It's butts and ice. And this is all fresh mm -hmm. fish. Yeah. So we had a wonderful day today mm -hmm. at Gonzaga Bay, hanging out in the do? sun, spear fishing, spearfishing, kayaking, paddleboarding, sunbathing, mm -hmm. lunch eating, hiking, exploring. Oh, that was a lot. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was a good day. No, I was talking about the fishtail. <laughs> the fishtail, he was like, wow. Oh, he's hungry. Oh. <laughs> oh, Tucker, that's Second. too much fishtail. So we've got live and give 4 by 4 over tonight for Ooh. dinner again. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> we really enjoy having a couch. It's unbelievable. <laughs> So our one day trip to Gonzaga Bay turned into like almost a week and we knew we had to keep moving 
and we finally decided it was time to go. Yeah. Even Nutmeg had some doggy friends by this point, so it was kind of hard to say goodbye to all the, the dogs that she'd play with. So yeah, just... yeah, I'll tell you what, we were kind of like enjoying everything for Nutmeg, if that makes sense. So before we left for Baja, she had um, a cancerous growth on her belly that we had removed. And so we were definitely trying to like make sure Nutmeg was having like a ball. Cause we didn't, we didn't know what was gonna happen. Doggy cancer, cancer itself is terrifying. And doggy cancer I feel like is especially cause you can't explain anything to them. It was so fun and so, like made our hearts so happy to see her just running around on the beach and making doggy friends and being a dog, you know, she loved the water. She was chomping around and rolling in stinky stuff. And yeah, so it's hard for her to say goodbye, I think. It's hard for us to have her say goodbye to her <laughs> doggy friend. She probably didn't care. <laughs> uh, we also weren't in a hurry to leave either because the road south of Gonzaga Bay, there's a new highway being built, which isn't gonna be done anytime soon. It's been, I think at this point it had years. been, yeah, already been worked on for like two or more years. Yeah, a while. And so anyways, it's this massive 20 plus mile stretch of just, of this, for miles. Well, and this, and, and this. Up, yeah. I mean, this is a detour from hell. The only thing that's between Gonzaga Bay and the, the, the highway we're traveling to, to access, I think Highway 1, is uh, Coco's Corner, this <laughs> crazy little spot. And even that's like not a whole lot. It's just uh, this little spot in the middle of nowhere. It's a guy's house. You can go in and buy a beer. You have the option to leave your underwear. I'll put it on the ceiling. But more on that in the next video. <laughs> we didn't come this far just to stop here. So, time to head south. We are on the highway from uh, Punta Final to Guerrero Negro. Um, the, the real highway is under construction and so we are basically off-roading. Um, and we thought we could do it towing the truck, but the truck and the, uh, the dirt bike have hit a few times, so we're gonna uncouple. We got the truck unhooked, and honestly, as shitty as that was, braking, we don't really break stuff, but just bending things and chewing cables up. We're back on the road, and it sure is beautiful. Ain't no broken cable gonna keep us from having a party up in here. You ready, Mama? Our liquor cabinet, we're not zip tied shut. I think we'd have margaritas right now. <laughs> Let's go to Guerrero Negro! Yeah! Oh, what does that mean? Black gorilla? <laughs> Let's roll. Since our RV is big and slow, we left early in the morning with plans to meet up with Fabian and Isabella later that day. And what's becoming the norm here in Baja is that things did not go as planned. We put together a ton of resources to help you travel both in the US and in Mexico. Things like travel guides, checklists, discounts and promotions just for our viewers. Some of the companies that have partnered up to give you these offers are only allowing them for a limited time. So if you want to make sure you get all the good stuff, click it, download, do what you got to do. Either way, we hope that these resources help you on your next adventure. You can find some of our earlier Baja videos over here. The next video in the series is right here. You can find out more information on our website as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.